Thanks for subscribing to this channel. If you value the effort put into bringing you this entertainment, why not buy us a coffee in way of appreciation? There are links in both the description and the pinned comments below the video. Your continued support, likes, and comments are greatly appreciated. I live and breathe a yellow-bellied sapsucker. <laughs> Hi, Norton. Hey, Dan. What do you say, Ralph? Just a minute. I'll be right with you. I'm going to make an entry in my bird watching book here. I just seen a yellow bellied sapsucker. Bird scene. Yellow bellied sapsucker. Place where seen. Central Park. You know, one thing that bothers me they're not supposed to be within uh, 3,000 miles of here. Well, how do you know it's a yellow bellied sapsucker? Don't forget, last week you saw a robin with a wishbone in its mouth. You said it was a chicken hawk. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm sure this is a yellow-bellied sapsucker. Why are you sure it's a yellow-bellied sapsucker? <laughs> what else could it be? He's got a yellow belly and it was sucking sap. <laughs> I don't know why a man of your age watches birds. Why shouldn't I watch them? They watch me, don't they? <laughs> the only bird that watches you, Norton, is a woodpecker. <laughs> I don't have to run of the litter. <laughs> Look, Norton, I asked to have lunch with you in the park because I got something very important I want to talk to you about. What? I want you to do me a favor. What do you want? I don't know, but somehow or another, I made a mistake in the bus today, and I made the wrong change. I must have given somebody a $20 bill for a dollar bill. Now, I got to turn in my receipts to the cashier at 5 o'clock tonight. Will you lend me the money? Look, Ralph, it's not that I'm against lending you money, and you can do anything you want with it. It's just what you don't do with it. What don't I do with it? You don't pay me back. <laughs> Look, Norton, don't lend me the money. All I want you to do is invest $20 in it. What do you mean, invest? I'll tell you what I mean. Norton, let's face it. I'm a man with big ideas. And sooner or later, one of those ideas are going to catch on. And when they do, I'm going to be a big shot. And do you know what happened to people who become big shots? Yeah, they forget their relatives. <laughs> no, Norton. They incorporate. They incorporate. I'm going to become a corporation. Do you know what a corporation is? Yeah, I know what a corporation is. When a person or a group of persons duly authorized to sell, distribute shares, become involved with the attention of the stockholders, grouping about together with those shares, with the intention of selling the shares, comes to an evil interest there. How did you know that? You ever hear Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Pierce and Bean? <laughs> yes. I got an office right outside of downtown sewer I work in. Well, I'm glad you know what a corporation is, Norton, because then you'll understand what a great opportunity I'm offering you when I tell you that I will send you a percentage for $20, a 20% percentage of the Ralph Cramden Corporation. I like that. Trixie forgot to catch him. Of course, I can't give you too much stock. I can only sell you a few shares, but, well, I still think you'll make a profit on it. Well? Well, isn't it appealing to you? No, don't. I don't like liverwurst without ketchup. Can you stop with the liverwurst? I'm talking high finance. Look, for $20, you get 20% of all the money I make over and above my salary. Listen to me, will you, Ralph? My mother didn't raise no stupid children, you know. I work hard for the money I earn there, down in that sewer. It's no easy job, you know. Some days I get it right up the head. <laughs> invest my money in any, any proposition, believe you me, it's got it's to it's make sense. It's got to have a sound, logical business foundation. Only then will I make the plunge, as we say in the trade. Norton, I'm very happy to hear you speak like that. You sound like an intelligent man. And that's exactly the type of man that I want in my corporation to be vice president. And if you give me the $20, and get 20% of my corporation, I am making you the vice president. Hmm. Me a veep? <laughs> now you're talking sense. Wait a minute, pal. Here, yeah. here's the 20 bucks. Thank you. And I certainly am lucky to get a man like you for vice president. <laughs>
I say that this calls for a toast. There you are. Thank you. To the corporation, Ralph Pam, the president, Edward L. Norton, vice president and chairman of the board. Wait a minute, hold it. Hold it, don't move. <laughs> By Jove, it is another yellow belly sapsucker. <laughs> boy, oh boy, two yellow belly sapsuckers in the same day. Boy, I ought to phone the society about this. What makes you believe anyone is going to believe you when you tell them you saw two yellow-bellied sapsuckers in a park where they're not supposed to be within 300,000 miles of? Wait a minute, Rock. You got a point there. But I know how I can fix it. Birds seen two yellow-bellied sapsuckers. Place where seen Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly lucky to get a man like you to be my vice president, Martin. <laughs> yeah, that ah. sap sucker. <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart. Boy, you're always burning something there. If it ain't your finger, it's my food. <laughs> it's no joke, Ralph. I'm only kidding, sweetie. There, yes. feel better now? No, it doesn't. I'm telling you something, Ralph. That stove is a booby trap. One of these days is going to blow both of us to smithereens. If you are hinting that I should buy a new stove, you'll have to get a better idea than that. Now, look, get to work on the old stove and cook my new supper. You can cook your own new supper. <laughs> Don't think your attitude scares me, Alice. I'll get my own supper. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> hey, there, Ralph. What are you doing? Oh, uh, I'm getting my own supper. Uh, Alice isn't feeling too good, so I'm doing her a favor. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, <clears throat> Ralph, I uh, wanted to have a little talk with you about the corporation. I've been vice president for about a week now, and uh, you ain't showing no profit. <laughs> I had a, a stockholders meeting with myself, and uh, I come to the conclusion that I'm getting a little impatient. Haven't you got any business ethics? How can you interrupt the president of the corporation while he's eating? All right, I'll wait till you're through. <laughs> Ralph, uh, could I have a banana? Go ahead. Hey, got no bananas. Could I have an apple? Go ahead. I ain't got no apples either. Could I have an orange? <laughs> Go ahead! <laughs> I haven't got any oranges either. You want a peanut butter sandwich? I don't like peanut butter. I like apples. <laughs> or bananas. <laughs> or oranges. Hey, uh, what kind of peanut butter is that? Is that the crunchy kind? Yes, it's the crunchy kind, and I can prove it to you. When this jaw hits your head, you'll hear a crunch. <laughs> Don't get excited, will you? Remember, you're talking to the vice president of Ralph Cameron Incorporated. All I'd like to do is eat in peace. Go ahead, who's stopping you? Fine thing for a president of a corporation to be eating. Peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> you ought to be eating something that's stick to those fat little ribs of yours. Would you mind leaving this apartment and going back upstairs? All right. All right. I'm going, but I, I got this to tell you. I'm going to leave your corporation to the state of bankruptcy. I'm withdrawing my $20. You told me that every time you turn around, I'd make money. Well, so far, you ain't been exactly no pinwheel. <laughs> I thought the whole thing over, you know. You got a corporation, I got 20% of it. I got 20% of nothing. How can you get rich on 20% of nothing? Is that what you're beefing about, 20%? All right, you got 30%. It's 35% or nothing. It's a deal. It's a deal. 
Bob, I, I hope I didn't offend you, Ralph, but, uh, you know, the way I drive a hard bargain, I gotta watch out for my interests. I gotta admit, you put it over on me that time, Norton. <laughs> Man. Mr. Ralph Camden? Yeah. My name is Frederick Carson. I'm an attorney. An attorney? My firm is handling the estate of the late Mary Monaghan. I suppose you'll remember she used to ride on your bus. Mary Monaghan? That's the old lady I used to help on and off. She used to get on a bus for years. I didn't see her lately. I was wondering what happened to her. Gee, yeah. that's a shame. Well, she didn't forget your kindnesses. She remembered you in her will. Now, the will is going to be read tomorrow, Friday morning, at 10 o'clock at her apartment. Will you be there? <laughs> I'll be there if you want me to. How come a poor lady like that's making out a will? Well, she wasn't exactly poor. She wasn't? No. Her estate was valued at roughly $40 million. <laughs> See you Friday. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> $40 million! Alice! Alice! $40 million! I'm inheriting $40 million! Man, what happened? What happened? He fainted, can't you see? Fine thing. Guy in her is $40 million and he faints. <laughs> what am I saying? 35% of that belongs to me. Yeah. Breakfast ready. I haven't, I haven't got time to eat breakfast. Well, why not? It's only 8.30. The lawyer said they wouldn't read the will until 10. Alice, why must you hide things where I can't find them? Where's the shoe polish? In the top left-hand drawer. It's not in the top hand, drift hand drawer. It must be there. It must be, huh? It must be. It must be, but it's not. Don't always say it must be, Alice. What you mean is maybe, not must be, maybe. <laughs> this must be it, maybe. <laughs> you and your snide remarks. Ralph, will you calm down a little bit? If you don't take it easy, you know, you'll be a nervous wreck by the time that will is read. I am not nervous, Alice. I am not nervous. I may be a little excited, inheriting $40 million, but I am not nervous. <laughs> nervous at all. You just read an Esquire where the well-dressed man always polishes his socks. <laughs> Ralph, I know you're a little bit excited, but after all, the will hasn't been read yet. We don't know how much she's leaving you. What do you mean we you don't know? You keep talking about millions, Ralph. It may just be hundreds. What are you talking about, hundreds? She's leaving $40 million, isn't she? Said in the papers this morning she's only got one other relative, one living relative, a nephew. And she doesn't like him. The paper said she had no use for him. Ralph, that's her own living relative, her own flesh and blood. He might contest the will. Contest it? Contest it? Ha, 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 hardy, ha, ha. What do you mean, contest it? Did he ever help her off a bus and help her on one? You may not realize this, Alice, but in a few hours, I am going to be a very rich man. Ralph, all I'm saying is don't count your chickens before they're hatched. And remember, Norton gets 35% of those chickens. Don't worry, I can take care of him. <laughs> what do you mean? Ralph, you wouldn't cheat Norton out of his share. Of course not. I'm not going to cheat him. I'm just going to try to do what's best for everybody. You know how people act when they get a lot of money. They go nuts. <laughs> you know how Norton is. He's the nervous type. He'd really go nuts if he got his hands on anything. First thing you know, he'd quit his job in the sewer. Next thing he'd do is buy clothes, buy automobiles, yachts, start taking a tour around the world, drinking champagne, eating caviar. First thing you know, he wouldn't come home. Poor Trixie pleading with him, please come home, Norton. Him laughing at her. That'd be a nice thing, wouldn't it? After all she's done for him, 
pleading for him to come home and him laughing at her? Well, if you think that I'm gonna do that to such a nice girl like Trixie, you're crazy. <laughs> No, I uh, already had breakfast. How about a second breakfast? I already had that, too. It'd be kind of ridiculous to have three breakfasts, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I will do, though. I'll uh, start on my first lunch. <laughs> hey, Alice. Oh, yeah. Norton. Ah. I'm glad you're here. I want to talk to you. Hey, listen, listen, listen. It's getting late. We'll talk on the way down to the Monaghan Mansion. We'll talk on the way. You don't think for one minute that you're going to the reading of the will with me, do you? Well, of course I'm going, Ralph. You'll need me. You don't think of the small details, the little things. For instance, did you happen to think of that? And what is that for? The small details, Ralph. You can't come away from that place with $40 million in your pocket. You've got to have something to carry it in. <laughs> Yeah, there's the vice president talking. Well, are you sure that a bag will hold $40 million? A bag like that? Yeah, this will do the trick. Is that so? Why don't you make sure? Why don't you run upstairs and cut some paper money into the shape of dollar bills and see if they'll all fit in there? <laughs> the small details. Yeah. Is Trixie upstairs? Yeah, she's upstairs. She's waiting till I get back. We are going to make a trip that I have always wanted to make. A trip? Yeah, now that we're getting into the millions, uh, I'm going to do something that I always wanted to do. Going on a second honeymoon to Niagara Falls, only this time we ain't hitchhiking. <laughs> I'll just run up and see tricks. All right. Come on, Ralph, will you snap it up? I'm anxious to collect that 35% of the $40 million. What do you mean, collect it? What do you mean, collect it? You can't take that money out of the corporation. It's got to stay in there. That's what a corporation is for, to put money in and let it grow. Look, this has grown enough. 35% of the $40 million belongs to the stockholders. This is only the start. Look, as president of this corporation, already, from just $20 you gave me, I'm already making you millions. Funny. Look, you've got to leave it there. You've got to leave it in the corporation. Then I invest it. Then I reinvest it. And then re-re-reinvest it. Well, before I finish with you, pal, I'll have you out of that sewer. $40 million, 35% of it belongs to the stockholders. Will you stop saying $40 million? It's not $40 million, do you know? When you inherit $40 million, do you know how much you have left? Let me give you an example. 35% belongs to the stockholders. Will you stop saying that? Now, look, this piece of paper represents $40 million. All right, I inherit $40 million. Right away comes federal income tax. Then comes the state tax. Then comes the city tax. Then a few miscellaneous taxes. Then you have to pay for the lawyers. And that is what is left of $40 million. <laughs> Thirty-five percent belongs to the stockholders. your breakfast. Come now, Fortune. You've got to eat, you know. Is everything ready in here? Mr. Carson is going to read the will. Everything's ready as it will ever be. But I'm worried about Fortune oh. Bascom. He isn't eating. Oh, poor little dear. Oh. He misses Mrs. Monaghan. Yeah. Come, Fortune. Eat your breakfast. Ah, oh, there's the doorbell. It must be that Mr. Cramden that they are expecting. Uh, Mr. Carson and the others have been waiting. I'll tell them you're here. Thank you very much. How do you do? Hey, 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 look. Today I seen a parrot. Oh, will you stop that? <laughs> Now, look at Norton. I'm telling you now, and I'm telling you for the last time. Don't embarrass me here. Can't I even look around? All right, but don't touch anything. 
What a grouch. Boy, how about this place? This is real class, huh? Oh, beautiful. Bet you they spent at least $100 on the furniture in this room alone. Sure. <laughs> hey, hey, Ralph, look. Uh, I bet this guy had a rotten barber. What's <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, how do you do, Mr. Carson? I'm sorry I'm late, but I was taking care of my corporation. <laughs> we were about to start without you, but oh, there uh, are some things that just can't wait. <laughs> like we say in the sewer, time and tide, wait for no man. Uh, uh, this is my uh, business associate, Mr. Norton, Mr. Carson. Uh, this is Mr. Bradley, Mrs. Monaghan's nephew. Oh, uh, <laughs> so you're the bus driver. I'm yeah. very glad to meet you. Uh, no hard <laughs> feelings, of course. <laughs> you know how fickle fate can be. <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if we'll all be seated now, we'll get right, on with it. Yeah. This shouldn't take very long. This will is quite short. And there's no question as to its legality, so I shall skip the technicalities and get right down to the bequest. <clears throat> To Herbert Bascom, my butler, for his many years of faithful service, I leave the sum of fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Sorry, a little habit I picked up watching the quiz shows. <laughs> <clears throat> to my maid, Mary O'Donnell. I leave the sum of $25,000. Some people are never satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> to my nephew, Robert Hilliard Bradley, who by his gambling and philandering has shown himself to be utterly incapable of handling money, I leave the sum of one dollar, <laughs> which will undoubtedly be promptly deposited with his bookmaker. <clears throat> I uh, hope you pick a winner with it. <laughs> please, please, may I continue? Certainly. <clears throat> to Ralph Cramden, my favorite bus driver, <laughs> I leave my fortune. I'm rich! I'm rich! I'm rich! I'm rich! I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. Yourself. Rich, I'm sorry, I came so sudden, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> Ralph Cramden has shown himself to be kind, sober, courteous, and conscientious. And to such a man, and only such a man, would I entrust my fortune. My rich, 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 rich. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Now, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yes. To such a man and only such a man would I entrust my fortune. I therefore direct that immediately upon the reading of this will, Ralph Cramden take possession of my fortune. Get the bag. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cramden, this is fortune, and according to the will, you take immediate possession. <laughs> Carson, uh, yeah. am I to understand that this is the fortune? Yeah. Look at him. 